we are now familiar with what style is. Now we will come to our particular topic. What is literariness and what is literary style? The language of poetry and fiction. All prose is sometimes called fiction. So that's why I have not used the terms for drama, for prose, etc. separately. So all genres are represented, art types of literary texts are represented by two terms, poetry and fiction is similar in many ways to ordinary language. Both ordinary language and literary language, the language of poetry and fiction are in many ways same. In both we have repetitions, we use same words you have seen two paragraphs from Mark Twain. All the words were very common, but their use by a writer was leaving certain effect on us. We want to know what special, what specific technique that writer uses that an ordinary language becomes literary language. So both languages have repetitions, both use same words, same grammar, same sentence structure, metaphors, similes and rhythm. Everything is common between the two. See how you daily see some uh, panelists on television with while talking on current issues, political issues, they talk in such a way that they repeat the same sentence, the same phrase and even sometimes it seems that they are doing poetry in prose. Because natural speech also has its own melody, on, uh, it's, it has its own music. When we talk, rise and fall of our speech creates a rhythm. The, uh, sometimes we uh, stress on some part of the word and sometimes we don't. So this alteration of stress and unstress, it creates a rhythm in our speech. But literature turns ordinary language into a different language. It creates this difference. There is something special, as I said earlier. This difference is created by the use of particular devices. What do we mean by devices? Figurative language. Figurative language. This is from figure. Figure image. So imagery, figurative language, both terms are the same. And they stand for all those devices which create image in our mind, some kind of picture in our mind. For example, metaphor, simile, personification, etc. Some examples of these devices are given here. For example, the sun smiled happily on that day. Now you see, sun never smiles. Smiling is something related with humans, but we are humanizing the sun. This is called personification. Now see another example, colorless green ideas. Now see the contradiction. Here we have color of ideas and ideas never have colors, you know. Ideas are something abstract. Concrete things have colors. Walls, 
which are painted in different colors, your dress, your books, tablecloth, these things are concrete things are colorful. But ideas have color that is green. And again, see, colorless green ideas. At the same time, they are also colorless. So this coexistence in this phrase of colorless and colorful, this contradiction is called oxymoron. So there is a long list of such devices. People, while creating poetry or fiction, they use such devices. And what happens? The use of these devices create a feature in ordinary language. And that feature is called literariness. The language with literariness is called literary language. This is the difference between ordinary language and literary. The choice of literary devices, which uh, I have mentioned here, to invite particular response of the reader, this is called literary style. Now, I have told you three terms. What is literariness? It is created by certain devices. What are those devices? And uh, the language that has literariness is called literary language. And the choice of devices which create literariness, this is called literary style. For example, you see examples of literary style. For example, critical response is roused by Twain. We have discussed Twain's uh, prose in uh, the previous module. So I haven't repeated the paragraphs here. The purpose of the writer was to criticize human nature, certain attitudes and behaviors of humanity, modern human beings. So he wants to invite critical response in the reader. This response is aroused by using simple noun phrases such as higher animals, organized masses. Why? Simple language, simple phrases and simple adjectives. Higher is adjective, organized is adjective with ed. So these simple adjectives are used for a particular purpose to avoid covering human reality with wordiness. This is the purpose. The choice of these words depends on the purpose of the art. Okay. Now see, here is Keats, another example of literary style. You all know John Keats, romantic English poet, and here we have his short poem, When I Have Fears. Now see the choice of words and especially the grammar, the use of WH, WH clauses to create a feeling of fear. When I have fears, that I may cease to be, I would die. Before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before I write something, before high piled books in charactery hold like rich garners the full ripened grain. He talks about his library that is full of books like uh, a garnery where we store grain, etc. When I behold, this is repetition of the phrase again. When I behold, 
upon the night starred face, the starry night, full of stars, huge cloudy symbols of a high romance. And I think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance and again see repetition of WH class when I feel fair creature of an hour that I shall never look upon thee more thee is for you this is old form of you never have relish in the fairy power our fiery power old spellings of unreflecting love then the love that is not reciprocated then on the shore of the wide world i stand alone and think till love and fame to nothingness do sink the response of all WH classes comes in the last lines. He delays the expression of fear till the end of the poem. This is Karl's style. And this effect of fear is created by using grammar, WH classes. This is how writers, poets and prose writers, they choose language to rouse a particular kind of response in their reading.